Hello everyone. I welcome you all to Engineering Physics course A. Myself, Dr. Manam Ramanjanailu. I'm a faculty from Division of Physics, Department of Science and Humanities. I did my PhD from IIT Madras. My research interests are I work on nanomaterials and thin films for optoelectronic applications. I love to teach physics for everybody. And this is my contact email ID and phone number. If you have any queries, you can contact me through this email and phone number. Regarding the course objective and description, this course is aimed to give the knowledge to the students on the crystal physics and also followed by the principles of quantum mechanics which will be used in the electron theory of solids. And also, this theory gives the foundations of uh, semiconductor physics which will be used to understand the various devices like optoelectronic devices and photonic devices. And also, this theory further gives information about principles and concepts of electrical, uh, electrical properties and magnetic properties in the engineering applications. These are the course description and objectives. What are the outcomes of this course? Upon completion of this course, the students will be able to understand how to compute the crystal geometry in terms of crystal planes and defects. This is the first unit gives this information, followed by the second unit gives how to apply the quantum mechanical principles to learn the dynamics of the free electrons in a metal. This gives the properties of the metals. And followed by, we also learn how to compute the carrier concentrations in semiconductors so that we can understand the electrical conductivity in various semiconductors. And also, students will be able to understand electron dynamics in the presence of electric field and magnetic fields. This will be given in the fourth unit. And the fifth unit is, students will be able to recognize the importance of the optical, optoelectronic and photonic devices in the engineering applications. These are the expected outcomes upon completing the course. Next, coming to the course unit, we have, we have divided this course into five units. In the first unit, we discuss mostly the crystalline solids. In the crystalline solids, we start with the bonding in the solids. There are various types of bonding between the atoms in the solids, followed by the differences between the crystalline and amorphous materials. And we visualize the crystals by using simple concepts of lattice and basis. Followed by, we also visualize the crystal by using simple unit cell and understand the lattice parameters of the unit cell. And further, we also discuss about the various lattices, Bravais lattices in two dimensions and three dimensions. And after that, we calculate the various parameters for a Bravis simple cu uh, cubic lattice. That is, for a simple cubic, body centered cubic, and a face centered cubic. And after that, we determine the spacing between the two planes by, by measuring the distance between the two planes. That's the derivation of interplanar spacing. And the most important thing is Bragg's law. Bragg's law gives us the information about the crystal system, that is interplanar spacing and the various lattice parameters so we can understand various macroscopic properties of the material. That is also we will discuss. And finally, we will discuss the defects in the crystal. Defects plays a major role in the optical properties, electrical properties, magnetic properties, and many more. And in, especially in the defects, we, di we discuss majorly the point defects. This is about the first unit. And the second unit comprises of two parts. One is the quantum mechanics. Another one is free electron theory of metals. In the quantum mechanics, we discuss the principles of quantum mechanics. And then these quantum mechanical principles, we apply on the free electron theory of solids to understand the properties of metals. Those are electrical properties, magnetic properties, optical properties. However, in our course, we study 
majorly on electrical properties of solids. Followed by, we also distinguish the materials based on band gap of the materials. Those are metals, semiconductors, and insulators. In the third unit, we specially discuss the semiconductor part. In the third unit, we discuss the semiconductor, semiconducting materials, and also we discuss specially intrinsic and extrinsic semiconductors and how to compute their carrier concentration and how they are varying with the temperature and Fermi energy. And also, we also distinguish the semiconductors based on their band gap. That means either direct band gap or indirect band gap. This is very important in, the, in fabricating various devices like LEDs and solar cells, etc. And finally, we will discuss Hall effect. Hall effect is one of the important phenomena in semiconducting physics, which gives information about the type of the carriers. It either in type or P type, and also it gives the number of carriers. That means carrier concentration. Also, of course, this will give a lot of other information. We will discuss all these things in the third unit. Coming to the fourth unit, this is electromagnetics. It comprises of two parts. One is electrostatics, another one is magnetostatics. These two combinedly gives us electromagnetic theory, the foundations for electromagnetic theory, which will be very useful for any communication and also fiber optic communication, etc. in the present days. In the fifth unit, this is a, this unit is fully uh, developed for application oriented. You can see here, we, in this optoelectronics unit, we explain uh, the advanced applications, optoelectronic applications like the photodiodes, and then photovoltaic cells, photovoltaic cells, LED, and lasers. These are the, some of the optoelectronic devices and photonic devices we will explain in this unit. In addition to this, this course also contains the laboratory sessions. These, these are the following laboratory sessions. You can see here, these are all to understand the concepts and applications of the, applications of the course contents throughout the course. You can see all these will be helpful for you to understand the course contents and also to apply the concepts of the physics in various advanced applications. In addition to this, these are the reference textbooks that you can follow. All these textbooks are available in our library. You can get them, and you can read them to get more knowledge. Hoping you all enjoy this course. You can contact me through this email and phone number. Thank you all and see you again.